This video will go into the sound function MATLAB, how it's used, and how we can use it to visualize, in some appropriate sense, the solutions to these second order oscillation type equations. So the sound function lets you hear the sound that's generated by a certain sine wave type function because sound waves are just sine waves. So if I have a sine wave in MATLAB, the sound function will let me generate that as a sound so it can be heard. Let's look at the sound function through the help command in MATLAB to see what that gives us. So sound plays a vector as a sound. The signal in Y is meant to be the sound wave itself and the sample frequency FS is sort of how often that is sampled. With values between minus one and one, it's like a normal sine wave. So how does this work? Well, the default sample rate is 8192. So let's store that as a variable. And now I want to make a sine function at a certain pitch then we can play it via the sound. So let's call this function a for reasons that'll be clear in a second. And this function is going to be a function of t, which is going to be sine of 2 pi times 440 times t. Now, the sound function wants a vector, not a function. So how do I do that? Well, I have to come up with a set of t values that give me the vector, then I can put that into this function. So to get the vector, I need t values first. And our sampling rate is 8192. So I'm going to take a lin space here from say 0 to 2. So it's going to be 2 seconds. And then how many points do I want? Well, I want 2 times the sampling rate. If I want to do 4 seconds, I place this by a 4 and this by a 4 because I basically want to sample fs times per second. So from 0 to 2, and I sample 2 times fs times. If I want to do 0 to 4, I do 4 times that many times. Will give me that. Now my y vector is going to be a at these t values. And now I can run the sound, which is y vec, and then the sampling frequency. We could leave off fs because that's the default frequency, but if we do this and run it, we get a constant pitch. And that is, on a piano or in any sense, the a above middle c, because A is 440 hertz, and that's exactly what this line here gives us. It gives us the pitch at frequency 440 hertz, so it gives us an A. Now what you were dealing with stuff for this lab is mainly looking for things like beats that will appear in these sounds. So let's make another sound, which is going to be a slightly sharp A. Now the sound that I want is going to be the average of these two. We now play that sound. You can hear the beats in there. And that little pulsating in and out, that's the beats that come out of this structure. So this sound function lets you sort of see what's going on in terms of the auditory components of these different solutions. You can also graph them, right? I can plot T vals versus Y vec and view that. And we see the beats right there. That in, out, in, out, those are the beats again. As a final note, MATLAB has some sound files built into it. The main one being it has part of Handel's Hallelujah Chorus. So if I type load Handel, you should be able to do it in your MATLAB as well. And sound YFS. We can hear it. And to compare, we can also plot this function See, it looks much crazier, but that wave is what gives you the Hallelujah Chorus that you just heard MATLAB play. That's a brief intro to the sound function, how it's structured in MATLAB, and how we can use it to see what's going on with these second order equations that we'll be solving throughout this lab.